In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, start training a StyleGAN2 network. Um, the process for that is that we need to convert our data set into the right format for StyleGAN2, and then we need to run a training command. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to show you to how to do is to upload um, your data set into your paper space machine. So in this case, I already have a data set that is all square images, 1024 by 1024, um, and it's sitting on my desktop, and it is about three and a half gigabytes of data. And as I've told you, you don't want to do that through FTP because that'll be very, very slow, and that's going to cost you money to use your paper space. So the trick that I do is I zip up that folder. I then upload that folder to Google Drive. And obviously, that takes a little bit of time. But once it's up there, uh, we can use a thing called GDown to download this file directly into our paper space server. So as you see here, um, I have a zip file of my square 1024 by 1024s. I'm going to, um, what I do is I use the git shareable link. Um, the thing you want to make sure that you have here is that uh, in the advanced section, you have um, it on public on the web. Um, and this is the best way to access it via GDown. So make sure that's the setting. <clears throat> We're then going to copy this path. We're then going to go to our paper space machine. So imagine that I'm already logged in because I am. Um, and you will be here actually. Um, <clears throat> so the next thing you want to do is you want to cd into your stylegan2 directory. Um, the next thing you need to do is you need to make a directory. So I usually call it raw datasets. And now what we want to do is we want to download that zip file directly to uh, here. Um, so you might not have gdown installed uh, by default on your paper space machine. The way you would install that is do pip install gdown. Um, I probably already do. I do. Um, so if you run that, that'll install uh, gdown for you. The next thing we want to do is we want to cd into that raw datasets folder. We want to type gdown dash dash id. And then we're going to paste in that URL. Now, the thing about this URL is that you don't actually want much of it except for uh, this command here, which is this is the ID for the file. So what you kind of have to do is you have to do some cleanup to get to get that actually uh, out of there. Cool. So now I've got this. I'm going to run this command. Now, as you'll see, it's downloading, and you'll see that the megabytes per second for download speed is like around 200 megabytes per second. Uh, usually when I'm trying to download stuff on my laptop, I get like at most 10 megabytes per second. So this is saving me a ton of time. So in LS, I see that I have this, fo this file here. Uh, the next thing I need to do is I need to unzip this file. Uh, this can get a little messy. Um, what I generally recommend doing is looking up unzip and making sure you understand exactly how it works. I know for a fact that all you need to do is type in this command. Um, sometimes you have to send it to a certain directory, that sort of thing, but this should work just by itself. We're now unzipping all the files. This is going to take a little bit of time, um, but this in combination with the download is still going to be way faster than trying to upload uh, a raw file set up to uh, paper space. While this works, um, let's take a look at what we're actually going to do for the next step. So what we need to do is we need to create a custom data set. So under here, under preparing data sets in the GitHub StyleGAN2 folder, um, you'll see that there is uh, a function here to produce custom data sets. And what we're going to look at is we're going to look at custom. Um, and then what we want is we want this first line of code here. Still unzipping. Yep, there we go. So I'm going to paste this in. Actually, you know what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that that worked the way I expected it to. So I'm going to ls. Um, this looks OK. Let me just look inside of sq1024. Yep, all the raw images are in there. So that's everything I need. Um, so now I am going to go ahead and paste this command in. Um, the way this command works is that you need to create from images. The first folder is where the, where the file is going to go, where your data sets are going to go. And the second is um, where in your, uh, sorry, the, the, it's actually going to point to the data set. So this is the raw data set. So what we're going to do here is we are going to first put in that we want this and then where we want our data to go is in the root folder slash style gan2 and then in a folder called datasets 
and then we're going to name this. Let's name this SQ1024 just to keep track of everything. I generally recommend that you give this name something a little bit more, um, a little bit clearer of what you're actually producing. So this might be like, since these are all ladies flowers, I might call this ladies flowers. But just because I've named this file 1024, I want to make sure that these line up. Um, so I think we're ready to go with this. Let's run it and see what happens. Can't open file data set tool. That's because I'm in the wrong directory. So what I actually need to do here is I need to go back to this directory and then I need to change my command. So now this is still correct, although I actually need a slash here. And then this needs to go to um, raw underscore data sets slash. Uh, so because this file exists inside the StyleGAN2 directory, I needed to go back a directory to find it. Now we should run this and it should work. Let's see. Yep, so now it's loading images. You'll see it's going to take a little bit of time to actually generate these, um, but that's okay. This is exactly what we need to happen. Uh, I also do not recommend um, doing this. You can do this on your desktop machine. So if you have your raw data set, you, have, you could ha put these files on your desktop and actually run this command directly from your desktop. I don't really recommend that because the files that it's going to produce, these TF records files, are actually far bigger than this raw data set alone. So again, you run into a case where you've got to upload this to your paper space machine and it's going to be even slower doing that. Um, so while this is running, I'm just going to show you what is happening here. So uh, this is still processing. Um, if we go back to our FTP application, so I'm logged into my paper space machine. If I refresh this page, you'll see I've got that raw data sets folder. Um, this is where all of my files were. And then we've got another folder called data sets. And in here, you'll see SQ1024. And if you look at this, you'll see that there are files called TF records. Um, and you'll see these are only about, what, 15% done, 20% done, and they're still really, really big. So what you're actually looking at here are um, the way StyleGAN produces these data sets is in powers of two. So um, two to the 10th power is 1024. So this is all of your 1024 by 1024 data. This is 512, all the way down to four pixels by four pixels. This is a bit of a legacy from StyleGAN 1 in that um, the way it trained was actually through these steps. Uh, the way it trains now is it kind of picks based on what it needs, um, which is ambiguous and it is ambiguous. Um, so we still want, want to produce all these files. Um, so from here, like this is everything you're going to need. Um, once this is done, we'll be able to start the training process. So I'm going to come back here. Um, I'm going to pause this. Once we're ready to go, I'll set up the next step. So now we're going to look at actually running the training model. Um, <clears throat> we've already produced our data sets. We're just about ready to go. Uh, just to double check and make sure where we are, we um, will look at what's inside of StyleGAN, the StyleGAN2 folder. Remember, we're on paper space. Um, we're going to look inside of this data sets folder. Oops, uh, data sets. And we'll see we have our ladies crops folder in here. Um, and if we're looking directly at what's in there, we have all of our TRF records files. So now we're ready to train. Let's take a look at uh, what we need to do to run training. Um, I'm going to go back to the StyleGAN2 uh, GitHub file. I'm going to scroll down here a little bit. I'm going to look for something called training. Here are the training networks. And here's what it says I can do. Python run training. Uh, we're going to need to assign the number of GPUs. We're also going to need to look at uh, what data set we want to run and mirror augmentation. So let's cut and paste this. I think I might run into an issue because of the way that they write these, but let's double check real quick. Yep, that's going to try to run it. It's fine. Make an error. Go up. And now we're ready to just go here. So uh, the first thing we want to edit is the number of GPUs we have. If you're on paper space, you only have one GPU. Sorry, we are not um, the rich folks of Google or NVIDIA. Um, the next thing that we want to do is this data sets directory. So this points to where your data sets directory is. Um, and if you notice, this says it's in the root folder and then in a folder called data sets. So we need to edit this to say uh, inside of StyleGAN2, inside of data sets. Next thing we want to do is edit our data set name. It was ladies crop. Um, if you made your own data set, you'll need to change this name to match what you're expecting. 
Uh, last is mirror augmentation. So let's talk a little bit about mirror augmentation. So in the case of uh, the, the faces uh, data set that StyleGAN is so well known for, um, they do a thing that's called mirror augmentation. That means they flip some, they randomly flip some of the images that they're training on uh, left to right, right? So like you, a human face is fairly symmetrical and that means that you can flip an image left to right and the machine learning model will learn that like it's okay if faces are left or right mirrored, right? And you might get, you basically can have the same hairstyles or other things on each side of your face. Um, so in most of my cases, I leave mirror augmentation on. There might be a reason that you would turn yours off, say if you had text um, and you really wanted to learn something that looked like text or if you had, I don't know, there could be any number of things that you might not want to flip left to right. Um, so in your case, uh, I would definitely recommend thinking about if you need this or not. I've also heard uh, anecdotally from some folks that they think mirror augmentation screws up their training. Um, I personally have never found that, so I would leave it up to you to guess, or if you really are running into issues with training, you might want to try turning this off. Um, the last thing I recommend adding is what's called, whoops, that's not going to work. Okay, we're going to try this again. Broke it. Um, this one, and then the last thing I want to I recommend adding in here is a thing called metrics, and set it equal to none. So metrics are a way for data scientists to know how well their training is going. Um, for us, we're going to rely on our eyes. Uh, the other thing about metrics is that it can add a lot of additional training time. Um, so just for us, like we're going to turn it off uh, because we're really going to check a, uh, um, the test files that it produces and see how we feel about each one of those. All right, so I think we're about ready to go here. Um, everything looks set, so I'm just going to go ahead and press uh, return and we should get going. Data set root directory. Oops, okay, I see what happened here. So you go back and edit all of these. Okay, now I think we're ready to go. So we'll see it submit. So, so far, so good. Um, it can take a while for these to set up. So I'm going to stay uh, recording just so you can sort of see what displays on my screen. Um, but it might take a while, so you might want to jump ahead just to sort of see where it ends up uh, before you get too far. In case you're listening along with me uh, at this speed, um, we are just finished up here. So this is now training. Um, so on a P5000, um, you will see a new training message about, mm, about once every hour. So what I actually recommend doing is running this the first time just to make sure it works. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit Control C. That will stop the training should stop the training. It'll stop the training in a minute. <laughs> cool. Um, and when it's finished now, now I'm going to hit press up and I'm going to get the exact same command. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit control A. That's going to move me to the beginning of the line and I'm going to type no hub. Um, so if I haven't talked with about no hub with you yet, this basically says run this command in the background. 
um, and it logs all of this to a file called nohub.out. If you were to not run this with the nohub command, what would happen is when you disconnect your paper space server, like by, by either closing your laptop or exiting out of the terminal window, it's actually gonna quit the command. Um, so when you hit nohub. We hit, we type in nohub and then the rest of the command, uh, it's gonna keep it running in the background. Um, and that's gonna be the best way for you to uh, keep an eye on, on your, and allow, basically allow you to train while also doing other things with your life. Because it will take a couple days for this to train correctly. Um, so I'm gonna get, go ahead, press enter on this, show you what it does. It basically spits out uh, nohub, ignoring input, and appending output to nohub.out. That means all of this that we saw up here is gonna happen again. Um, but it's going to write to another file. So you're not going to see any input here. Um, what I recommend doing is every couple hours uh, checking on this nohub.out file so you can download it to your um, computer and then open it in a text editor. And then you can uh, double check to make sure there are no errors. I'll show you another technique as well for this in a minute. Um, but this is it. It's now training in the background. Uh, let me go ahead and show you what it actually produced behind the scenes. So I put this model train for a couple hours and we're gonna look at it and see uh, what we're getting. So the first thing you're gonna do is inside of StyleGAN2, you're gonna click on results. Um, because I've been training on this model a bunch, um, you're seeing a ton of like higher end numbers here. So 00038, you will probably see all zeros or maybe all zero one. Um, <clears throat> you'll also see that StyleGAN2 and when you passed in uh, your model, like you'll see the name of the model here and then a bunch of other stuff. Uh, when you go inside this folder, you'll see that there are a bunch of pickle and fi other files and things that we want to look at are what the fakes are. And usually you want to look at the latest fake. That's how you can tell if something's working. I'm going to go ahead and open this. And okay, so here's what we're seeing. So the first thing you're probably wondering is why are there faces in this model? The second thing you're wondering is why does it look like garbage? Um, <laughs> so the answer to your first question is we're doing a thing called transfer learning. We're taking the FFHQ model that uh, the NVIDIA folks previously built on, and we're using what, what's learned already from that model to train on top of it. That speeds up our training process quite a lot, um, but it leaves us in these kind of weird states initially. So if I train this for probably about, so this has actually only been trained for about 16, uh, what they call ticks. If I train it for more, um, as I get to like 50 or maybe 60, like all these faces will disappear completely. Uh, but it's just an, it's a way that like speeds up our training process a little bit more. Um, but this looks pretty good so far, actually. Like, I know what this should look like, and we're doing pretty good. Um, <clears throat> what you also want are these pickle files. So the pickle files are actually the things you're going to use to generate images from. So while it's helpful to see what, what this looks like, just as sort of like a check-in, like, is this looking okay? This is the file you actually want. So what will happen is a lot of these will stack up after a certain amount of time. And what I recommend doing is you can delete these files. Uh, you can delete them after... Like, check the fakes and see what it looks like, and then you can delete it, but never delete the latest one, because the latest one is actually what it's training from, so make sure you don't delete those. Um, in the next step, we're gonna download one of these files, and we are going to uh, show how to actually like train it, or how, sorry, how to test it, how to generate images from this. Um, in this case, what I've done is I've actually got another previously trained model that we're gonna look at. So I'm gonna actually take from this model, and I'm gonna download these files, and we're gonna be able to uh, generate images from it. 